Hey little hoes, my name is Kristen, welcome back to my channel. So this has just been kind of a difficult week. I, it's just been so cold and dreary. It really hasn't done anything to boost morale or anything like that. And especially not after finding thrip on some of my houseplants. And these houseplants are kind of my, like, uncommon aeroids on my makeshift greenhouse in the living room. And I was just looking at my Jose Bueno, Bueno, however you want to say it, the other day, just because I did notice two scales, which it's a bug, you guys know, on him probably a few weeks ago, and I just kind of wanted to make sure that they were dead and not spreading. There were two more scales, and I noticed some fucking thrip on the newest leaf. And I then very anxiously pawed through the rest of my plants on that rack to see if anyone else had it, and there were a few other thrip here and there. I am really bummed out about it. I'm trying not to focus too much on it, dwell on it, because it would just kind of drive me crazy at this moment in time. So I am going to be treating them today. I don't really want to. It's a big process that I think I'll have to keep repeating over and over again to try and nuke that population. But I am going to do it. I'm hopeful that it doesn't spread too much or become too much of an issue down the road. I am going to do sort of a multi-pronged approach. I'm going to first start by spraying the plants and neem will work, I believe, but the neem I have is really shitty. <laughs> uh, it's a cold pressed and it's very chunky right now and kind of difficult to get back to its oily stage. So I am going to be using an a different product called End All. I'll give it and show you. So this is the product by the Safer brand. There's not much left in it. Um this has several different things of it. Potassium salts of fatty acids, the clarified hydrophobic extract of neem oil, which there's some thoughts on that, but it also has pyrethrins, which I believe pyrethrins are pretty effective against thrip as well as spinosads, but pyrethrins are actually derived from chrysanthemums. So it's a little bit less toxic, and because of the fact that it's cold out now, I can't really take my plants outside and spray them because it is chilly, and I'm reluctant to use anything harder just because I have to spray in my bathtub. So yeah, I am going to at least be starting with this. I don't know how far I'm going to get with what I have left, but... Another thing I'm going to do is get some beneficial nematodes. And I bought some yesterday, but I forgot to bring them home from work. So I'm going to run over there today and pick them back up. And I think I might also get another bottle of this. But yeah, uh, that is what's going on today, guys. I'm bummed out. And if any of you have dealt with thrip and want to give me any tips, I would love to hear it. But I thought I would sort of show you the process of me dealing with them. This sort of thing goes on. If you grow plants, be it indoors or outdoors, you will experience bugs and diseases. And, you know, you just have to take it one step at a time. Try not to get overwhelmed and just pull the trigger and treat it when you see it before it becomes a real issue. The unfortunate thing is growing plants inside, there really aren't any natural predators, any good bugs, so you're at a higher chance of getting some bad infestations. So nip it in the bud when you see it. 
I also want to touch briefly on the nematodes. Nematodes are a beneficial microscopic bug, essentially, that you use by mixing them. They're just like, I think they come in just like a little powder, essentially. You mix that with water and you pour into your soil. The water sort of activates them, like water activates dry yeast, and they become alive and active, and then they start colonizing in your soil, eating the bad larvae and eggs that have been laid there, and using nematodes, it doesn't necessarily wipe out the population, but it at least breaks that cycle of laying eggs, larvae, hatching adults. So the thing that you want to do is try and break that life cycle of the bugs as much as you can. And I am hopeful that these nematodes will do just that and that I don't have to worry quite as much about them at the egg and larvae stage, that the nematodes will take care of it and I can just worry about, you know, spraying the foliage for the adults. Now, I did do a little bit of research about the nematodes because I wanted to know if using any sort of chemicals or sprays along with the nematodes would hurt them at all. And I did find some interesting um, articles about that, that in some cases there are a few chemicals that don't interact well with them, but some actually have a synergistic effect with the nematodes, so sort of just a buddy system where they're both trying to knock out the same enemy. Imidacloprid, which you guys will probably know by like the systemic granules that you can sometimes use, um, it also comes in the liquid form, which I think you use more commonly for outdoor plants. A lot of people will use the systemic granules for indoor house plants. I personally am trying to avoid using too much imidacloprid just because the bugs can sort of develop an immunity to that chemical. So that's why I'm trying to avoid the imidacloprid for now. But I thought it was an interesting fact that imidacloprid and nematodes have a sort of mutually beneficial relationship. So do your research. And just make sure if you use nematodes that you're not using something that might interfere or harm them. I will link below that article that I found with the chemicals that are safe to use with them, in case it's of interest to anyone. There is also some talk about using nematodes for foliar application, and, you know, you just mist it on the leaves, essentially. Well, that... I think is going to be a little bit more difficult because nematodes need to stay moist to be alive and active. That's why when you apply it, you want to make sure that afterwards, for a few weeks, you keep your plants fairly evenly moist. You don't want, obviously, saturated soil, but you need to keep it moist to keep them alive. Um, you also have to do the same thing for leaves if you do that foliar application. and. I don't know how doable that's going to be just because it's very dry here, very dry air, and it will evaporate pretty fast, I think. I might try it if it becomes a little bit more um, of an issue with the thrip, and I'll just have my humidifier on blast and hopefully keep everything damp enough so that they remain active and maybe you know, kill off any bugs that are on the surface of the leaves. But that's a future experiment. So this is the epicenter of the thrip outbreak. I'm hoping that this tent maybe keeps them a little bit more contained to this section here and I don't have any um, outbreaks elsewhere within the house. So yeah, I noticed probably the worst amount of thrip. There were like five bugs on that newest leaf up here. 
and there were a few others elsewhere. Just checking. And I'm thinking that the thrip, again, it might have come from just being outside over the summer, but this brandy is just looking ill, and I'm not sure if it's the lack of humidity or if we have thrip, but this plant and this little graziele came in looking kind of funk. So I'm almost wondering if that was the source of it. But who's to say, right? And, you know, I've been noticing some thrip-like damage. And again, I can't say if it's just because of the thrip doing some damage or if there's some other causes. Like I said, I do have very low humidity and some of this is, you know, kind of indicating lack of humidity versus thrip, but I'm just going to play it safe and try and spray as many plants as I can today. My gorgeous Florida ghost had a couple of thrip, not many. Um, down here, the hastatum, or this subhastatum, had a couple, and I did do a kind of mad dash neem attack to it the other day, and my aberrant form philodendron had a few as well, so I'm just going to try and nuke everybody in this tent today. I am not looking forward to it. I'm going to start with probably the ones I noticed the most on, or I'm most concerned about, and then when I get a new bottle, I'll go ham on the rest. I'm gonna start out a little bit more natural, and then if I have to, I'll get into the more serious chemicals. Okay, little hoes, the plants that I'm gonna be spraying right now are in the bathtub. Um, this isn't glamorous, this isn't fun, but it's kind of the reality of owning plants. If you own them, bugs will come, be it thrip or something else. So, you know, you just gotta deal with it. And again, I'm doing this in the bathroom, in the bathtub. If you do it too, make sure to have your fans running as much ventilation as you can. Cracked window if you can, but for now, I'm gonna leave the fan off just because it's very loud. I'm going to be using as much of this as I can to get all the leaves, backside, front side, down the stems and petioles. I have a little bit more product to use on another plant, so I'm gonna go get one or two more. Okay, so I'm back. I got my aberrant form. I really wanna nuke this guy because it's so contorted that I have a feeling the bugs might live up there in the flappy contorted bits. The mame because it just started looking good. I don't want it to go downhill. And the brandy because she never looked good.
right guys, so I'm pretty much done with that bottle. I might just do a slight spritz more on a couple of them. Um, and then stay tuned for a little later when I apply the nematodes. Okay, side note guys. I was curious to learn if thrip like humidity or not. Just because I know spider mites are less prevalent where there is more humidity. Thought I would look it up. Turns out thrip also hate humidity and it slows their growth. So you best believe this humidifier is going on blast uh, until I resolve this thrip issue. Also, you saw me applying some sprays without gloves, without a mask, without, you know, super great ventilation. Don't do that. Don't do as I do. Do as I say, and that is glove up, be protected. Welcome back, little hose. It has been a lot longer than I expected to get the rest of this done. I began filming this last Friday, and I just progressively started feeling sick throughout the day, and by Friday night, Saturday, I was just really not feeling well at all. So everything was kind of pushed back. I had at least four different videos that I wanted to shoot last weekend. Um, I did get my Lithops video out and was hoping to get the rest of this accomplished, but I was just, like I said, out of it. Couldn't really even get out of bed at one point, so I'm A-OK -okay now, and I'm just kind of playing catch-up, trying to get this thrip situation under control. So I was not able to get any more of the end-all. We were pretty much out of it at my work, so I did go with the Captain Jack's Dead Bug, which is um, a spinosad. Spinosad is, I believe, a fermented byproduct of soil organisms and bacteria that has a negative effect on bugs. All bugs, unfortunately, or I should say most bugs, even beneficial ones. I did look up if it was safe to use nematodes, and I didn't find a whole lot. There was one article on PubMed which I will try and link below that suggests it shouldn't interfere too much with your beneficial nematodes. It might have some slight bad effects upon them, but they have been shown to recover from it. So I will be spraying all these plants, but I will leave it for a day and apply the nematodes tomorrow just to try and give them a little bit of um, time to let the leaves dry out and hopefully, you know, dissipate a little bit of any product that falls on the soil. So it will be interesting comparison. I wanted to kind of keep with the end all and see, but you know, this might give me a comparison of what works better. So far, the other plants are doing good that I sprayed with the end all. There was one plant, the aberrant form, the new leaf just toasted from the spray and it just turned brown and splotchy. Super unattractive, I'm not sure what went on there because um, as you guys know, oils can magnify the intensity of the sun. I kept my grow lights off and I kept the plant in the tub, which is not lit really at all. So it was pretty severe burn. Um, hopefully this doesn't cause any burning, but again, I would rather deal with some unsightly foliage than thrips. The only plant I am kind of concerned about with burning is the, the silver sword, the Hastatum. I will be doing a single leaf test on this dude. Also a little worried about the Gloriosum, but you know what? She's just fugly, so... I don't believe it's too toxic, volatized to people, but again, work in a well-ventilated space. 
I am using gloves because I believe some bacteriums and such can kind of irritate your skin and I don't really want irritated hands today. As always, shake your products before use. Okay, they are all sprayed. I did kind of go through afterwards with my gloved hands and rub the front back and some stems just to try and get it to spread across every nook and cranny of the leaves. I am going to put the little fan on these, let them dry, close the door, have the uh, fan on for more ventilation. And then, like I said, I will be hopefully applying the nematodes to everybody tomorrow. I am going to pre-wet the soil just because, again, the nematodes need to remain in kind of damp conditions for two weeks, the package said. So I'm going to get these plants hydrated, the soil all nice and moist to prep for them tomorrow. So here is the pack of beneficial nematodes that I got. Um, there is the Latin on which ones are contained. Hi, Fred. Fluffy butt. I just wanted to show you guys. This is the back. And it gives instructions on dosing them. And they are UV sensitive. So once I apply them to the soil, I'm going to turn off all the grow lights um, in the living room just to try and get them established. I'll probably give it a few days before turning them back on. Um, also, you once you open the packet, they need to be used right away. So again, that's kind of why I'm waiting until tomorrow and then I am going to apply them and apply it to everybody, including some of the plants that I haven't sprayed. I'm going to be focusing mainly on my aeroids and more broadleaf plants. This is what the nematodes look like. Just like a flower. Little microscopic babies up in that. Good morning, little hose. So it is the next day and I'm going to be applying the nematodes. So I got a bucket of water. They suggested um, getting one to five gallons, but the amount of water wasn't super critical. You're just trying to get enough to dose everybody that you need to apply the nematodes to. So um, the water temperature needs to be um between 59 and 69 degrees fahrenheit and i am at 69.1 here so i think we're pretty good and then you're supposed to add the packet stir and leave for 20 to 30 seconds to activate
And now we stir thoroughly. And then my method for doing this, I'm just going to be getting a cup, dipping it in and watering all the plants. The lighting is gonna be really poor in this, but um, I have to turn off all the lights, probably not turn any grow lights on because nematodes are UV sensitive. So yeah, they did say you can apply indoors anytime. Um, in general, it's better to do it in the evening or morning or when it's really an overcast day. And I'm not sure how well nematodes do in sphagnum. I do have a lot of plants still propagating and growing out in sphagnum. So it'll be an experiment. Got everyone really generously in the grow tent. Now I'm going to just play it safe. I have extra and dose everyone else in here. And then I'm gonna turn off my light over the terrarium and give the soil in there a good dose just because I did see, not thrip, but uh, potentially some mites or ground aphids, I'm not quite sure. So that is next. All right, so I just finished dosing everybody I thought needed it. I primarily focused on the plants in the living room. A few things here in the sunroom. Um, I'm sure it's going to take a lot of upkeep over the next months, even years, to keep the thrip at bay, but I feel good about what I did today, and I'm hopeful that it at least makes a dent in, you know, whatever population there is. So that will do it for today. I'll keep you all updated on how it's going. And as always, stay safe, healthy, and safe. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.